diving into this story about the Blaze reporter, Steve Baker, who was uh, arrested by the FBI, I believe, this morning. Uh, we're going to join now Jill Savage. She's done fantastic work with OutKick in the past. As I said, some of you may remember her from sidelines in college football, among other things. Also, by the way, Catherine Herridge is the CBS reporter. I think I mispronounced her last name or got it wrong. Catherine Herridge is the CBS reporter. But Jill, you were just in the courtroom with Steve Baker, who uh, was there covering January 6th. What happened? What can you tell us about this case? Yeah, so I am actually standing just outside the courtroom now waiting for Steve and his lawyers to uh, to come out. But I can tell you that as of this morning, Steve, at 7 a.m., had to self-surrender to the FBI. His court hearing was today at 10 a.m. Uh, he was one of four defendants in there, and they told him before this, uh, during this week, they said, wear shorts and sandals. They wouldn't tell him the charges that they were going to bring against him, Clay, but they told him to wear shorts and sandals. We presume that would be that they would have him change in uh, to an orange jumpsuit, but he was indeed able to wear his dress shirt, dress pants, uh, but he was shackled at his wrists and ankles today. Uh, they ended up bringing four misdemeanor charges. I don't know if you've gone over those uh, already or not. We but, haven't. Can you, you know, tell us what is he being charged with? Yeah, so it's knowing, knowingly entering or remaining in a restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. Uh, the second charge is disorderly and disruptive conduct in a restricted building or grounds. The third charge is disorderly conduct in a Capitol building. And the fourth being parading and demonstrating or picketing in the Capitol building. And that one has been used against a lot of the January 6th defendants, uh, the parading around the Capitol building. Uh, was a very popular charge to bring against them. But, yeah, so Steve Baker, he was in there. You know, he's the first one up on the docket, and he will be released at some point today. Uh, and then his next hearing is set for a D.C. court on March 14th at 1230 Eastern. So, Steve, if, if you've been following this case, you know that Steve Baker was an independent journalist on January 6th. He said, I was just going where the story led me. I didn't know that I was going to be entering the Capitol building that day. I had no predisposition to be entering the Capitol building that day, even in the documents that they provided us today from court. They said he was in the building for approximately 37 minutes. So, Clay, a journalist entering a Capitol building for 37 minutes is now leading us here to where we have charges being brought uh, you know, against a journalist here. Hey, Jill, it's 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 Buck. Do we have some sense as to why now and why the delay? Right. I mean, there have been so many of these cases right. brought in the past. It, it feels like the timing here is significant. Yes. And this is something that they have been hanging over Steve Baker's head for about two and a half years. They've always put it out there that they were going to bring charges against him. That was just a threat, though. There was nothing that was ever concrete until December of 2023. They said the charges would be imminent. Now, what has changed, you ask? Uh, he came on as a Blaze media reporter uh, in the summer of 2023. And it seems that there would be a correlation between the two, because as you mentioned, it was such a long time uh, from one step to the next. But yeah, in, in December 23, they said the charges would be brought against him. They would be imminent. And here we are now on March 1st, 2024 with his day in court. Where is the court proceeding, by the way, Jill? Where are you right now? I am in downtown Dallas right now. So we are we are just at a courthouse right here in Dallas. And the, the next courthouse will be in D.C. itself on March 14th. Okay, so question for you. My understanding is that not only was he an independent journalist, but that the New York Times actually used some of his reporting from inside on January 6th. And on top of that, that they have reviewed security camera footage of him on January 6th. Uh, that is, I saw the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, talking about this, and they haven't found anything that he did that was of a disruptive nature that would support this. So this seems pretty astounding that this would be happening. I'm surprised and I don't know if you've seen it all, have any of the so-called left-leaning media commented on this at all? Because there were a lot of left-leaning media that went into the Capitol on that day and reported as well. Yeah, I have not seen any left-leaning media uh, report on this 
so far. But one of the things that has been interesting talking with Steve in the days leading up to this trial, he said that he saw a New York Times reporter go in to the Capitol building through a broken window. uh, And Steve just, you know, made a made a note of that in his head going, oh, that's that's odd. Why is this person going through this broken window, just entering the building this way? I'm just going to go over here and find, you know, a easy way through a door, uh, you know, so it's just it's interesting to see the way that things are being portrayed because he has been approached by HBO, The New York Times, several media outlets for his reporting that he had done on January 6th. And it hadn't been a problem uh, until, you know, things of unknown nature, Clay, has changed. So. What are the expectations now of of the of the next steps? I mean, you're you're outside the courthouse. You've obviously been following this very closely. Um, are, are they trying to offer some kind of a, of a plea deal to him? Likely, what what do we think is going to be happening in the days and weeks ahead with this journalist yeah. from the blaze? Yeah, I, I think that we're we're going to get those answers uh, from the the lawyers here later today when they when they are able to make it out of the courthouse. But they said to us. Uh, before they went in, this was exactly what they expected uh, just for today, just to very, you know, read through the the uh, charges, because that was something that they had been holding uh, against. You know, they didn't actually tell Steve Baker what he was going to be charged with until this morning, because, as they said, they were worried that he would tweet it out. Uh, so I, I, I'm very excited to actually. I mean, uh, by the way, I would tweet it out if the FBI was going to charge me yeah. with something related to doing my job, too. Uh, what, right. you, what can you tell us about Steve, Jill? Uh, you, you, I'm assuming know him. You're in yeah. the courtroom. Uh, what is Steve Baker like? How is he handling this personally? I don't know what kind of family he has, but obviously the requirement to defend yourself when we know that they have been trying to put people in prison for January 6th related events, it's, it's hard to see this as anything else other than the hard hand of government coming down on someone who's reporting they don't like. Tell us about him. Yeah, Steve is just, you know, a great guy that you see around the office. He's been coming into the office every day this week, uh, just, you know, business as usual. And we all just kind of look around at him like, hey, you know, maybe you should go do something fun. You don't know what's actually going to be happening uh, on Friday. But when you when you look at Steve, he's like, I'm just there. I just want to share with the people what what I saw, heard, learned. He's like, I've been a journalist for so long now. This isn't. This isn't even like, you know, the, probably the, the single most defining thing that I will do in my career. It might change now that the FBI has actually arrested him. Uh, but when you look at it, he, he just is a pretty, just, you know, good average guy that you, that you just, you never think that something like this would be happening in the United States of America. And Steve, you know, he asked his lawyers this week, why are they why are they doing this to me? Why is it me that they're singling out? And his lawyers said to him, you know why? Because you've poked them in the eye for the last three years, Steve. They aren't going to just let this go. So when, when you say who is Steve, he's just. He's a great guy who everybody would be happy to have in their circle of friends. Who is a guy doing his job on January 6th, who didn't know that January 6th was going to turn into what it did. Jill, appreciate you being with us. Thanks for bringing the story to us. We'll continue to follow it and, uh, and have updates. Obviously we'll want to know what happens when he's out of court later today. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, and, Jill. You know, Clay, I was at the blaze for six years. It's where I, I started mean, my this career. This has to hit where... you too close. Yeah, I mean, having been a writer at the blaze, this guy's literally <laughs> just covering Jan and six. Then they're now trying to put him in prison for it. Clay, I was, I was a blaze writer and I was right there when police were uh, pepper spraying and hitting with batons all the uh, Zuccotti Park, Occupy Wall Street. I was standing right there, but, you know, I, I wasn't in the middle of it. I was next to it. Uh, so, you know, I, I know what it is uh, to be somebody who's trying to bring the public the the truth, but you don't have that establishment shield. I mean, and, and in what world does that make any sense, right? The Blaze gets millions and millions of readers a month. Uh, why is one treated like journalism, as in the New York Times, and the other doesn't count? You know, I don't even like this term. People say, "Oh, well, they're citizen journalists or they're you know independent." No, you're just 
you're just a journalist the same way anybody else is, though I think the term journalist is these days increasingly meaningless because everybody has access to platforms. 